Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We talk a lot of recruiting during the offseason. In a lot of our conversations, we talk about the phrase momentum. And I don't know if there's a program across the country. In fact, I don't think there's a program across the country that has more momentum than Lincoln Riley and this USC program on the recruiting trail. Want to dive into some prospects that were on campus for USC throughout the week and then talk about some prospects that they'll be hosting this weekend. Extremely excited to get into this one. Before we do it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys in a massive shout out to the USC fans. We talk a lot of recruiting. We talk a lot of USC recruiting and the amount of support y'all continue to show to the fellas, whether we're talking about visitors, breaking down commitments, Truly cannot thank you guys enough for all the support y'all have shown the fellas. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, we'll continue breaking down commitments, covering this USC program on the recruiting trail. And without further ado, let's get into this one now. I want to start with the prospects that will be on campus over the weekend, but I want to make a quick note, and that is you look forward to the 2026 class, and you talk about some of the guys that were on campus during practice this week, a lot of modern-day kids, a lot of St. John Bosco kids, and many of the USC fans that have been listening for the last couple of months kind of know that I've been critical of Lincoln Riley and the staff not recruiting the backyard at a high enough level and I'll say this, the way USC is recruiting nationally, going to the state of Georgia, the state of Texas, the state of Florida, if they can continue that and then take some top kids from the state of California, that is what it looks like for USC to be dominant on the recruiting trail. And the fact that this much buzz is being created for some of those top prospects in their own backyard, for me, that's extremely encouraging. Now, let's get into some of the prospects that are going to be on campus over the weekend. And I want to start with four-star offer, three-star offensive lineman, excuse me, Connor Cardi from the state of Texas. And this is a guy that we're about a minute in to watching his film. You can kind of tell why Lincoln Riley wants this guy in this USC program. Going to the Big Ten, you want a nasty offensive lineman. Quite frankly, the first thought that came to my mind was, I want Connor, Connor Cardi on my side during a bar fight. This guy plays with an absolute mean streak. And Again, a lot of our conversations around this USC program have been, all right, we got to make sure, one, we're physical on the trenches, but more importantly, kind of that attitude for this USC program going into the Big Ten, not only along the line of scrimmage, but throughout this team, it's got to be taken up a notch. And a guy like Connor Cardi on the inside of that offensive line certainly going to play a role. And a couple other things other than just being nasty that I really like is, Phenomenal athlete, carries 285 extremely well. When you see him work up to the second level, does it really clean? This is a guy that can be asked to do a lot of different things at the collegiate level, and I think he's athletic enough to do a lot of those things. So I'm a big fan of Connor Cardi again, really big fan of what he brings from a physicality standpoint to this USC offensive line. And again, going into the state of Texas, generating some buzz for offensive linemen in that state that have offers from programs like Texas A&M. That's what you're looking for from this USC program. Next guy I want to talk about, and kind of continuing talking about bolstering up the line of scrimmage, right? Yeah, we're getting some guys from the transfer portal, but Lincoln Riley knows the recipe is recruiting these big bodies at the high school ranks, getting them in the program, getting them developed up. Trajan Odom coming all the way from North Carolina, very, very exciting defensive lineman, although a little bit longer, a little bit of a bigger frame than Carlin Jones in the 2024 class. Kind of similar game in terms of an undersized inside defensive lineman that just wins with burst and athleticism and twitch on the inside. No doubt, a guy like Trajan Odom is certainly going to put on some weight as he gets into his collegiate program. But this is a guy that I mean, you're consistently, uh, we say this all the time, I mean, football is a height, weight, speed game. And you have big time size, big time athleticism from Trajan Odom. If you can continue to put on some of that weight, have them maintain that athleticism, that's what you're looking for. And a guy like Trajan Odom uses his hands really well. You take a look at the offers, right? Four star defensive lineman, according to the composite offers from Bama, Oregon, Ohio State, LSU. This is a guy that is garnering a lot of buzz on the recruiting trail, will be on campus for USC. Over the weekend now, I want to take a little backtrack as well and talk about some of my favorite prospects that were on campus 
for USC earlier this week. And the first guy I want to talk about here is wide receiver Andrew Marsh. And as a Michigan fan, I was holding out hope that Andrew Marsh would consider Michigan. Sounds like that ship has sailed. USC, for sure a contender in this one. And you look at Andrew Marsh, one ultra productive at, in the state of Texas at the high school level, 65 catches over 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns. You can talk about the athletic profile for a guy like Andrew Marsh, really good numbers in the 400 and the high jump. I want to talk about the film though. This is a guy that wins in so many different ways from that wide receiver position. First thing that jumps out is 6'1", 175, plays significantly bigger than what he weighs on the scale. This is a guy with elite body control, elite, elite, kind of that eliteness in terms of tracking the football, making plays and having that body control to go up and make plays vertically down the field. That's probably the first thing that kind of separates Andrew Marsh. But then you start looking at him creating separation and then working after the catch. My favorite attribute about Andrew Marsh is that there's not really a hole in his game. There is so many different ways that he can hurt opposing defenses, creating separation, working after the catch, working vertically. When you have those wide receivers that have so many different ways that they can attack defenses, that's what you want in an elite offense. Andrew Marsh, one of the top wide receivers in the class. And I mean, a guy that I think USC certainly has a very good shot. I was on campus, I believe Tuesday for the spring practice. Next guy I want to talk, I want to talk about two different cornerbacks. One, Dejon Lee that was on campus on Thursday for the practice. You had Travis Scott there. It was absolutely bumping. Now Dejon Lee, it takes you real quick to see why Dan Lynn, Doug Belk want a guy like him. Six, three and a half, 180 pounds. We talk about this, Dan Lynn, Doug Belk, Lincoln Riley, they certainly have a type in terms of what cornerbacks they want coming out of high school. They want length. They want physicality. Dejon Lee certainly has that. One of the longer cornerbacks in this 2025 class. And you turn on the film, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Dejon Lee maybe transitions to that safety position as he gets to college. And that's not necessarily me saying he can't be a cornerback because he shows some really good cornerback film, but I more look at the traits. I look at where he is best. It's with the football in the air, keeping his eyes on the quarterback. That's safety to me. And I think, again, the sign of a good defensive coordinator <coughs> is being able to identify what your players do well and then how can you put your players in spots where they can be successful. And a guy like Dejon Lee, again, bring some versatility into that back end. Certainly can be a damn good boundary cornerback, but I think he could be a very good safety for Dan Lynn as well. Last guy I want to talk about that will be on campus over the weekend is cornerback Chuck McDonald. Now, a little bit of a different flavor than a guy like Dejon Lee. This dude is elite in man coverage. I think he plays nickel at the college level, plays nickel at modern day as well. You take a look at Chuck McDonald, put together like six foot 180. He looks like he could be up to 200 pounds. And you look at some of the attributes that you want at that nickel position. One, you got to have guys that can come up and be physical because essentially that nickel position, you're taking off a linebacker, adding a fifth defensive back, that fifth defensive back, that nickel back needs to be able to tackle and be physical in the run game. Chuck McDonald certainly brings that to the table. That's probably my favorite attribute about his game is the physicality. He is well put together, but then you look at some of the traits that you want to see in Nichols in terms of coverage, elite short area quickness, not necessarily the long speed that you might want as a boundary cornerback, but at that nickel spot, you're working against slot wide receivers. Either are quick twitch, you got to be able to stick in the, in the kind of the hip pocket. That's kind of where Chuck McDonald excels. So again, I trust Dan Lynn to get a guy like Chuck McDonald on campus and say, I don't personally kind of a side note. I don't get what the stigma is around being a nickel cornerback. I think it's emerging as one of the most important positions on the football field, right? This is a chess piece of the defense, a guy that's playing the run game, being in coverage. I think nickels are extremely important. And I don't think it kind of sometimes sounds like it's a downgrade. Oh, you can't play boundary cornerback. Let's kick him into nickel. In my mind, you want your nickel cornerback to be one of the best players on your team. And I think Chuck McDonald fits that nickel role at such a high level. Again, not necessarily the length that Dan Lynn, I think, wants at the boundary spot. But you talk about what he looks like as a nickel cornerback, has played it at modern day. I really do like this one. Really like what USC is doing on the recruiting trail. And again, I think 
they're kind of hitting that sweet spot where, hey, we want to we want to make sure we're getting some of the best kids from California, modern day St. John Bosco, that state of California, but also we're going to recruit nationally, right? We're going to go to the state of Texas. We're going to go to the state of Georgia and Florida. And I think if Lincoln Riley and the staff can continue to kind of find that sweet spot, that's that's that says some good things about where USC is going. Y'all know I'm kind of fired up about it again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If we get any commitments coming out of the weekend, we'll be breaking it down over the weekend. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas as always. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.